Hello, and welcome to listen to my talk. My name is Kaisa Nyberg, and the title of my talk is Statistical Model of Correlation Difference and Related Key Linear Cryptanalysis. First, I will give an introduction and then present our contribution and finally discuss some aspects of the solution. First, introduction and motivation. The scope of the talk is related key linear cryptanalysis. There is not much literature and much work in this area. So I hope that uh, presenting a correct model, correct statistical model of linear uh, related key linear cryptanalysis will encourage more work in this area. So the idea is that given a linear approximation, uh, its correlations are computed for two different related keys. And now the problem has been that there are statistical dependencies uh, over the data and also over the related key pairs when we compute these two uh, correlations. Of course, using two independent data samples will put remove the first dependency but the second one still remains. And this uh, uh, problem has not been properly addressed in the existing literature. And my goal is to fill this gap. So let us have a look at the difference of related key correlations and particularly in the case of iterated block cipher. So the correlation is can be for an iterated block cipher, the correlation can be given as a sum taken over all trails ending with A, input a, a mask A and output mask B of the trail correlations with signs depending on the key. And now when we take the difference, we get this factor uh, which depends only on the key difference delta. And we can see that terms with tau delta, the inner product between tau and delta equals zero cancel out. Meaning that the, there are less um, terms in this sum and less possible values also for this sum. And these facts may facilitate Matsu's algorithm one type key recovery as discussed in uh, the paper by Röck and Nyberg in 2013. A second uh, aspect or possibility to exploit this fact is uh, particularly in a case where all the remaining terms are equal to zero. That is all the trail correlations with tau uh, with uh, tau uh, in a product between tau and delta equals one uh, disappear. And these are the two main applications previously um, handled in the literature. How, let's have a closer look at the algorithm one type key recovery. Uh, the key, there the keys are divided into key classes. And now we uh, note this key class by the value C that the difference of correlations take. And if the value C are sufficiently apart, then using a sufficiently large sample, the key class can be identified. So given a sample of size N, the attacker computes a sampled correlation difference. And under the assumption that these two correlations are statistically independent, uh, we get that within the key class, uh, key KC, the sample correlation, uh, the sample correlation is normally distributed with mean C and variance two over N. Then given this distribution, one can use different kind of um, decision algorithms to decide which key class is the most likely one. There's one decision algorithm presented in the paper by Röck and Nyberg, and another one presented in the single key context 
by Ashur and Raimen, but this can also easily apply to the related key case. Next, the second uh, type of uh, application is a distinguisher, uh, and of there, which can be used for key recovery also in the algorithm two type of, uh, of key recovery. And this is uh, based on the so-called key difference invariant bias property uh, as introduced by Bognadov and others in 2013. They not, saw that, uh, have, had observed that two ciphers, L block and twine have such a property that under related keys, the difference of correlation of some linear approximations are equal to zero. Actually, they were uh, able to identify a number of those, a small number of such uh, linear approximations, and then they used a multiple, a multiple linear cryptanalysis type of approach to, uh, to build a distinguisher for this case. But uh, for the distinguisher, we need to know what is the random behavior, and we need to know what is the behavior expected from the cipher. So from the cipher, we expect this behavior, and for the random pair of functions, of course, the mean is expected to be zero as well, but the variance is larger, it's two to the one minus n. and assuming that these correlations are statistically independent. Then if we do key recovery, testing by trying different key candidates or part, candidates for part of the key, and if the key is fully correct, then we expect to see this property that the cipher has. The, key difference invariant bias property. If the key is not fully correct, <clears throat> we expect to see the random property. And the decision algorithm based on hypothesis testing is presented in the, um, in the paper, in their paper. And how to do we sample for this uh, key difference invariant bias distinguisher in the same way as before we compute the sample of uh, given a sample of plain text of size n we get the corresponding cipher texts and then with under two different keys then compute the correlations and the difference of the correlation and again we the, the model that Bogdanov and others were using, um, are, they assumed that the correlations are statistically independent also over the random samples. And then in that case, the, the, over the random samples, uh, the correlation is normally distributed with the expected value C and various to over N. Then putting these things together from the previous page and this, uh, the behavior of the C, distribution of the C and this uh, over, the, over the keys and distribution of the uh, C hat over random samples, we get that for the right key where we expect to see the uh, behavior of the cipher, the KDIB property, uh, we get that C hat is normally distributed with mean zero and uh, variance two over N. While for the wrong key, the corresponding distribution is, has, is also normal, but now mean zero and variance slightly larger, two over N plus two to the one minus N. So now our contribution to these models, um, First, let us recall the problems we just saw uh, there. The problem is that even for a random pair of 
of pair of random functions f and f prime, these correlations may not be or are not actually are not never fully independent. Mm, and we remove this assumption and prove the same distribution as we saw before without any independence assumption. The second problem is that over the random, over the data samples, these correlations for a fixed key uh, are not statistically independent. And our contribution is that we give an exact expression of the variance of the sample correlation difference without independence assumption. Instead, uh, uh, it's an exact expression containing uh, another parameter, which we will discuss later, and which allow, will allow a much more natural assumption. So in this way, we can confirm, but also generalize the distribution used by Rick and Nyberg. And uh, we can also confirm and generalize the previous understanding of the uh, correlation difference uh, in the case of KDIB uh, property, maybe generalized to different type of uh, related key correlation properties. The main theorem concerns just a pair of Boolean functions of n bit vectors. Uh, linear approximations are are such Boolean functions and um, define the correlation as usual and the difference of the correlations and the sampled correlations as, as given the same way we already discussed these quantities. And let n denote the size of a sample. And now a new parameter is uh, uh, we denote it by Q, and it is the probability that these two Boolean functions are equal. In other words, we can write it as one half times one plus the correlation between F and F prime. Then we get that the mean of the sampled correlation is equal to C, and the variance is equal to 4b divided by n times q minus c squared divided by 4, where b is the so-called finite population correction coefficient, which has uh, the expression 2n minus n divided by 2n minus 1 if the sample is drawn without replacement, and 1 if the sample is drawn with replacement. Um, uh, if the sample is drawn without replacement, we use hypergeometric distribution here. And if the sample is drawn with replacement, we use the binomial distribution. And the difference and the, the uh, variances in these two cases for these two type of distributions uh, This, uh, bear, uh, are different uh, by this quantity 2n minus n times 2n minus 1. In fact, when we multiply the variance of the binomial, in the binomial case with this quantity, we get the variance in the hypergeometric case. So uh, this uh, binomial and hypergeometric distributions can be approximated using the normal distribution with the given mean and the sample, uh, given the mean and the, and the variance uh, over the random sample. As you moreover that the means, the C has, uh, is normally distributed with mean mu and sigma square variance. 
Then the distribution, the integrated distribution uh, over the data samples and over the related function pairs uh, of the C hat is approximately normal with mean equal to mu and variance equal to this quantity I have put here, where Q is the mean of Q, recall the probability Q that the functions are equal over the related function pairs. So the mean is taken over the related function pairs. Uh, this, uh, this formula doesn't appear in the paper. I just, uh, I put it here. Um, I put it here in the paper. We only considered the special uh, two special cases in the KDIB case. Uh, the two special cases are the case of the cipher and the case of the random. In the case of the cipher, mu is equal to zero and also the variance is equal to zero because the difference of the correlations is a constant. And then the C hat is normally distributed by zero mean and variance for BQ divided by N, where B is as before and Q also as before. And for random, actually the Q is equal to one half and um, and uh, mean mu is equal to zero and sigma square is uh, two to the one minus n and then the integrated distribution for c hat over the samples and over the you know, random uh, random functions is equal to uh, uh, is normally a normal distribution with the mean equal to zero and variance equal to two to the one minus n plus two b divided by n times one minus two to the minus n. And we can now look at different cases with replacement, we put b equal to one. Without replacement, we put b equal to the constant defined before. And then in the random case from this formula, we get this with this uh, formula for replacement and for cipher two over n, assuming that q is equal to one half. And um, without replacement, uh, we get two over n for random. From this expression, actually, it simplifies to two over n. Uh, and uh, the, for the cipher, we get this quantity. So for the cipher, the variance is always slightly smaller. And this allows, given sufficient amount of uh, plain text uh, and the related cipher texts, we can distinguish between the cipher and the random or wrong key and the right key. Finally, discuss, discussion. First, I want to discuss the role of Q. So the Q is the average correlation between um, the, a bit of a cipher text computed um, uh, with key K and the real, uh, corresponding bit computed with a different, with the related key. It's the average correlation between these two numbers. Setting Q equal to one half means that the related cipher texts are uncorrelated. So simply uh, setting Q equals one half. And uh, with this Q equals to one half, we get exactly the same distributions as used before in, in the previous literature on the, uh, by Bogdanov and others and by Röck and Newberg. So the assumption about independence Statistical independence of related key correlations of a linear approximation can now be replaced by a very concrete assumption about uncorrelated cipher texts under related keys. And moreover, this assumption is a very natural one and supposed to be satisfied for modern ciphers 
which are designed not to not to have ciphertext only attacks. In particular, if Q is different from one half, it means that this bit computed from the uh, related ciphertexts is not expected to be balanced, meaning that it may allow a ciphertext only related key attack if the, the balancedness is um, unbalancedness is really bad. The second uh, issue is the uh, issue of independent samples. Of course, uh, we can get the, make the correlations, uh, the two correlations, related key correlations, independent if we compute them over independently chosen samples. In which case we need two n plane texts. Uh, this is always possible, but uh, it will um, double the number of plaintiffs we need to do the analysis. With a single sample, we need only n plaintiffs. Of course, we need two n oracle calls to get the cipher texts. So, in other words, with the two independent samples, we need two n. Uh, plain text ciphertext pairs, but with a single sample, we need n triples of plain text ciphertext computed with one key and ciphertext computed with a related key. So the data, data requirement is smaller if we can use independent samples. And thanks to our analysis, now we know exactly how to handle handle uh, signal sample case. So conclusion, um, we have revisited statistical premises of related key linear cryptanalysis. And um, uh, shown that the single sample option can, is legal. We showed how to handle it. We uh, con uh, we confirm the model for correlation difference for random functions, uh, which hasn't really been proven before. And uh, we also, which we, I did not go into the detail in this talk, but in the paper, we also discussed extension to multiple linear cryptanalysis and show that it can also work under the assumption that the uh, linear approximations used in this analysis are uh, independent. We also discussed a little bit of extensions to multidimensional linear cryptanalysis, but saw some obstacles there. Actually, it looks that the analysis, if we want to uh, it looks quite complicated to handle this issue, and therefore it's left for future work. So I wish to thank you for your attention and see you at the conference.